เท
uh, while counting the collection, he steals some 500 rupees, 1000 rupees. It is the for us. What lay people can do, they must be involved in doing it. As you know, the famous passage in Acts of the Apostles, 6th chapter. We will be preoccupied with prayer and the word of God. Prayer and the word of God is your priority. Dealing with other things it is lay people's priority. So encourage the role of the laity in the world, in the church. How far you are doing? In the world and in the church. <coughs> in the church. That's why I said that three areas, for example, teaching. Say, catechism, marriage preparation. I'll come to marriage preparation later also. So, you have to be personally involved in certain areas. There will be established, uh, well-established families, men of experience, virtue, good family. It is a priority, it is a must that you call those couples. Select from your family some 10 couples who can talk to the people at least once. Once this family, Catholic family, very good tradition, coming for prayer. Why don't you make them address the couple being prepared for the family? What rich experience they will have. You can't speak much about the family. You can only give a homily or teach them the prayers. Of course, you can say from your experience what you heard, but their personal experience, how they lived these 50 years of married life. How many parish priests have this special couple or elderly couple who can be of a resource to the preparation for the marriage? I am simply giving one example. Now, the new document and even the um, reform that the Holy Father has said, as said at the parish level, there, is, there should be a family commission in which members are there who can be of greatest assistance. Please see me. I am happy many uh, assistant priests are here. And then when you become parish priest, kindly put it into practice. At least out of 15 odd assistants here, if one of them is touched by it, I am happy. Glory to God. I will make use of it that every time marriage preparation course is organized within the parish, they come for catechism, marriage catechism. I'll see to it some really proven couple or our assistant. We should do quite a lot. This is encouraging the role of lady. Family play, prayer, house visit. Encourage the role of lady. Not only merely once, a few old ladies of religion of marriage. What is the role of the ministerial priesthood? We are all called to ministerial priesthood. With reference to the ministerial priesthood, we always say the ministerial priest acts in persona Christi Capitis, in the person of Christ the head. So Christ said, I am the truth. So teaching ministry presents to the world Christ the truth. Christ said, I am the life. The sanctified ministry gives Christ the life. Christ said, I am the way. The shepherding ministry shows Christ as the leader. Okay, all right. So you are also indirectly called to say, I proclaim Christ the truth. I give Christ the life. I show Christ the way by my content by my life and my teaching, that's okay. But then, the ministerial priesthood is called to be at the service of the common priesthood to make the whole Christian community, the parish and the diocese, prophetic, priestly and kingly. Prophetic, priestly and kingly. It is not enough, you are prophetic, but the whole community has to be prophetic, priestly and kingly. The canon that describes the identity of the parish priest is canon 519. Something beautiful in the new canon is, who is the parish priest? He is the proper pastor of the parish that is entrusted to him. Proper pastor. Some are pastors in other parishes than in their own parish. 
land there I want bad. One of our priests was going about preaching everywhere. One retired teacher wrote our bishop saying, Bishop, our priest preaches everywhere. We also want to listen to his preaching. <laughs> Both he is our parish visitor. Proper pastor of the parish entrusted to him. And, <coughs> and then the canon says, he is called to share in the ministry of Christ of the bishop. It uses double genitive. You share in the ministry of Christ, ministry of the bishop. The bishop shares in the ministry of Christ in its fullness. And you share in that ministry. So in that way only our hierarchical communion, unity with the bishop. In some dioceses when they fight with the bishop, I will not tell the name of the bishop also. You, see. you should not celebrate mass if you don't tell the name of the bishop. You tell them. Ministry of Christ of the bishop you are sharing. Bishop shares in the fullness. You are sharing in the ministry of Christ, all right? But you are sharing in the ministry of Christ of the bishop. Of the bishop. To do what? Again, to teach, sanctify, and govern. In the triumph of Monada. And then it also says you can't do it alone. With other priests, deacons, and with the assistance of the lay people. How far, fathers, you make use of the lay people. It is sad. I tell you the liturgy also. Some of the priests are musician priests. Every time new new songs, people cannot sing. I go and start the Our Father. I myself don't know how to sing the Our Father, which they sing new new words. Especially for common functions. What is important is not new song, where a community can be vibrant and all can sing. See the other non-Catholic groups. Introduce new songs on a gradual basis. There are eight songs, two songs can be new. Why do you deprive of the community? Already the priest takes 90%. And the choir takes 9% of it. They don't even allow the community to sing. Is your community singing the responsibilities of at least the verses? The, a, a few sentences can they sing? That's important. Vibrant community. Lively community. And with regard to the liturgical participation, you know. How as many people as possible, when you are distributing reading to different people, same old people coming and reading, preparation. Sometimes the parent may not be interested. Mommy, today I am going to read the gospel. The mother is coming, read the first reading. The mother is coming. I am going to read the prayer of the faithful. The father is coming. This is a way to attract participation of the people, whole people, as many people as possible. The Easter week is coming. Give participation to the people. In our Catholic liturgy, so many times the lay people are bystanders without any active participation. Sometimes when I was conducting the way of the cross, stations of the cross, and when there was sufficient time, at least after each station, I used to say at least one, our Father, our Hail Mary, that people may participate something. Not one person reading everything like that. Let the community participate to the best of our ability. See, for example, for me, to stand and talk to you so long is not at all a problem. Suppose I ask you to stand and listen. It's very, very difficult. How many minutes you can stand and listen? It's difficult. We don't feel the uh, problem of the people and then make them active participants in the literature. With regard to singing, preparation for it, in everything. Sometimes uh, uh, we don't do the sufficient, even for a marriage, masses. Suddenly you say, show to the girl, read. The girl reads, the boy is struggling. The embarrassing them on, on the day of their marriage, everything we do. All the stupidity of the parish minister. You didn't check even that both of them know to read properly. Preparation. Preparation for the marriage liturgy, calling them two days ago, what reading you want. Father, it's easy to say we are busy, busy with so many things. You are busy with things with which you need not be busy. With which you need not be busy. Participation in the liturgy, family prayer, group masses, asking them to give short introduction, or appointing somebody to correct them. As many people make the parish community liturgically very active in your past. Then you would be very happy. Then, with regard to that one area I said, in this uh, regard only, 
I want to tell the lay people, so the old theology of pray, pray and obey doesn't hold the good anymore. Please do not continue that. So many people are leaving the church because they don't have opportunity to speak, opportunity to pray. They don't know uh, opportunity to uh, read the proclaim the word of God, sharing. If not in the mass, other community prayers make the community participate. Secondly, in this context only comes structures of participation. Structures of participation. Structures of participation. So, there are two important canons. At the parish level, there must be two participatory structures. If you are not establishing them, you don't believe in the church, you don't obey the Holy Father. When you don't obey the Holy Father, don't ask the people to obey. It is not because it will be problematic, Father. Don't send you all these excuses. It is not you giving a concession. It is the right of the people to participate in the participatory structures. <coughs> One is Parish Pastoral Council, PPC. Parish Pastoral Council, 536. Parish Pastoral Council, 536. The second is Parish Finance Council. Parish Finance Council. So there are many parish priests here, I know. If you don't have a parish finance council in your parish, you are not following the law. Don't impose any new law on the people first of all. This is obligatory by universal law. No exception. Don't say, Father, my parish income is only 30 rupees per month. Whole income, Father, only 30 rupees per month. Even if you have 30 rupees per month, there must be a parish finance council for the whole church. Vijayamada cannot be exception. With regard to finance, there must be transparency, accountability. Don't enrich yourself at the expense of the church. Or your relatives at the expense of the church. Be transparent. You have to go to God and meet God only with clean hands and pure heart. Why you are hesitant? Even the bishop should not say, I will tell any bishop. Bishop, Holy Father did not give you exception. The law of the church meant for the whole Catholic Church says in Canon 537, every parish must have a finance council. Must have a finance council. Finance Council, the people have the right to know how the money given by them is spent. People have the right to know. Bangalore, things are more systematized now. Every week, Sunday Mass, the priests are obliged to announce what was the last Sunday's collection. I'm sure Bishop will not object if any of the priests want to be transparent from next Sunday onwards. You say last Sunday, Mundial, uh, Sunday collection is rupees 750. Why can't you announce it? Why can't you announce it? Be honest before God. Honest before God. Let the people know. Suppose you got money from project or money from Bishop or something, you give account to the project manager and to the Bishop. That's okay. For the money received from the people, for the paddy, for the vegetables, for everything you have received from the people, for the goods you have received, you are obliged in conscience to give account to them. Give account to them. That's why parish finance council is obligatory. Don't accept yourself. Sometimes, as parish priests, we don't want to do it. We blame the superiors for not having some bodies. We ask the people, ah, you have to obey me. When you are in a system, suppose this is obligatory, some parish priests are not having. Imagine something is obligatory in civil law you are not having. You will be dismissed. You will be heavily fined. 
because canon law is violated people are not taking action people take do whatever they want not only 30 rupees 30000 rupees people get income in a month people don't have finance council keep the account as a mystery it is like messianic secret it says uh, the uh, some of them don't want assistant parish priest also. Bishop is willing to give. No, no, father, no need of assistant. Because all the Goldman he wants to do alone. Uh, everything uh, he wants to do alone. The parish priest, like Jesus, he asked the catechists, who do people say I am? Father, people are saying you are all the time coming around the world in car, father, all of India, some are talking, father. Then some others say, father, uh, you are enjoying life, Father, uh, so much, all the time, the best good possible part. Then who do you say I am? He asked him. Then the guy said, Father, one thing I know about you, the other day 10 lakhs perished money, but you asked me to deposit in your personal account. So he said, this messianic secret, you are not, no, don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Accountability with regard to money. Accountability with regard to money. Whenever you are dealing with other people's money, you should be more strict with yourself. If your own money, okay. Your own hard-earned money you spend as you want. Your personal money, okay. You are dealing with other people's money and then doing what you want. That's why this parish finance council is obligatory. Obligatory. But they have to assist the bishop. There must be statutes. These are things, how the members are chosen, how, what are their functions, responsibilities, even if it is consultative, doesn't matter. But having that, they know about the income of the parish at least. And they at least give consultation regarding spending it. Even if they are not deliberative or decisive with them. It should be, otherwise the greatness of the diocese, the authenticity of your diocese is not measured by they are singing well, they are all well off, they can attend the church as long as people don't participate in an area where they are more competent than you, why do you run a church, why do you call yourself Catholic church? That's it. With regard to parish pastoral council, parish pastoral council, is it obligatory? The law says, by general law it is optional, by diocesan law it can be made obligatory. Every diocese and bishop can decide in my diocese, parish pastoral council is also obligatory after consulting the Senate. He hears the opinion of the Senate, he asks them, uh, What do you say? In our situation, it may not be there, but then how the members can be chosen representing the whole parish. The, by election or by appointment, doesn't matter. Term of office, qualification. All that must be in the bylaws of the so-called statutes. And then parish pastoral council also. They also assist the bishop. Ass assist the parish priest. Okay. Assist the parish priest in exercising the triangle. In exercising the threefold function. So this, these participatory structures are very, very important. And then you have to put them in place. Any question regarding these two councils, please tell me, ask me, Father Sam. I want it to be established. Don't say like this individually I get that. No. It is structurally, even if it is problematic, even if there is quarrel, after sufficiently preparing people, there must be parish pastoral council if the bishop makes it mandatory. And whether bishop makes it mandatory or, or not, Holy Father himself has said that parish finance council is obligatory. The parish council. Yeah, that's what I call parish pastoral council. Can be appointed by the parish priest or they have to be directed? Yeah, that's what. The, how the membership, the universal law doesn't want to dictate terms. So it leaves it to the each diocese. In a particular parish, it may be elected. For example, with regard to the Senate, uh, Canon 4, 96, 97 and all says, Council of Priests. It speaks of three kinds of membership. You know, Senate or Council of Priests or Presbyteral Council. It says more than 50% must be elected. 
and then some are members by X of each show by the office they hold. Say for example, BG proprietor like that. And then some are uh, nominated members. Here it gives an indication. So even for diocesan pastoral council, it gives only general indication. The court gives only general indication. Now, the Vijayavada diocesan statutes can say when parish council is constituted, well, for example, Bangalore, even now all are appointed only, but at least they are parish council. Sometimes because of the language problems, and the election, there will be problems like that or not. Even if it is appointed, according to taking into consideration, some may be elected, some may be nominated, that may be the way. Ex officio parish council, some must be ex officio, for example, there is only one convent, there is a catechist and assistant priest. These must be ex officio. That is also indicated by the code itself. Those who hold the important offices within the parish, ex officio members, some can be elected, some can be nominated. You, you can follow these three categories. Three categories. But each uh, parish council statute, there can be a general statute for all diocese parish council statutes that can be followed and each parish should get it approved their own statutes by the bishop. If they follow the general one, no problem. If they make any changes, get it approved by the bishop. These are, uh, one of the things is we call principle of subsidiarity. The highest authority does not want to legislate the details. There must be a council, qualification and other things must be decided at the local level. Fathers, any, any other question on this? So you say, also the difficulty is also contrary view also you can express. No, Father, it may be very much for the West, not for India, or in Vijayawada is exception. If you feel like that also you can say. Or you can. I want you to be convinced about the theology. So sometimes this happens, you know, the village heads are there. This family, this family, this family and all. Even in that way also, make some adjustments and have it as a participant respect. Only thing is nobody should be eliminated. And see to it also that there are women represent. Now the church speaks about women representation. Outside world speaks about so many percent women. So see to it that so many members should be women. If they are not there, at least by uh, nominated members, they can be there. Once they are appointed, all members are equal. Once parish council is constituted, whether elected member or ex officio member or nominated member, all the members are equal, equal voting right. Yes. Regarding finance. Yes. The parish debated thousand two thousand right. Yes. They collect the money and keep in the bank. Yes. Yeah. Who is the responsible to pay the current bill, all bills? Ah, uh, okay. So regarding this, no. Different places have different. Rate. One thing is very clearly said. In all juridical matters, 532 says the parish priest acts in the person of the parish. Parish expenses must be paid by the parish priest. What is the role of the finance committee? Assist the bishop, assist the PP. Who is the primary parish priest? That has to be made clear to them. When I say I involve, involve the lay people, I do not say that give everything to them. No, you give. What I am saying is be transparent before them, let them be involved in the decision making, not simply leave all the parish property in their hands and you keep quiet. No, not like that. Not like that. You exercise in transparency and in consultation with them. That's the point. You have to be. You are answerable before the bishop. They are not answerable before the bishop. You are answerable for the income and expenditure of the parish. So that's it. In upper road, yeah. All the finance. Yeah. The in state, up, but in USA or any other place. No, that, uh, that's not. Yeah. Throughout the world, that is there. Which one? Finance uh, Council yeah. take care of it. No, Finance Council take care of it. This, this, this should not be against the law. You read can 537. It assists, no, even here, for example, important ISIS, more independence.